What's going on guys? It is Cynical and today for you guys I wanted to do a discussion video today. I wanted to talk about Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. I feel like it's been a little while since I last talked about Unchained Key and to be really honest with you guys, Unchained Key has kind of slipped into the shadows, if you know what I'm saying. Like ever since 2.5 was um, you know, revealed and announced, Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key really hasn't been sort of in the center spotlight, you know, 2.8 took that spotlight, so, uh, yeah, I, I really do not know what's happening with Unchained Key as of right now, um, of course it's only been out for like a month and a bit, came out at the start of September, it's now towards the end of October, so I'm hoping, you know, at this D23 that's happening November 3rd, uh, during the Kingdom Hearts fan event, we may actually get some news regarding the English version of Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. The only reason why I'm kind of doubtful about that is the fact that, um, of course, this D23 is a Japanese event because um, it's happening over in Tokyo. But anyway, um, hopefully sometime soon we'll hear a little bit about the uh, international version of Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. But that is beside the point. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the microtransactions and in-app purchases for Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. Now, prior to the release of Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, did a video talking about microtransactions, kind of speculating and coming up with a few ideas as to kind of what I believe the microtransactions will be in the game. And my primary idea was basically just saying, you know, oh, okay, it's probably going to be like some cosmetic items in terms of like you can buy outfits and stuff like that. And of course, um, because of the fact that I've actually been able to play Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, I now know what these microtransactions are. And I know a few people are a little bit worried about the microtransaction system because, let's be real guys, <laughs> anyone in the gaming industry and in the gaming community None of us like microtransactions, um, none of us like microtransactions, and it tends to be that free-to-play games are just absolutely riddled with it. it it's all good that a game's free-to-play, that's awesome, but is it truly free-to-play? You know, like, is it really truly free-to-play um, when it has microtransactions and stuff like that? So yeah, it's a really interesting kind of subject, especially kind of mixing in microtransactions with the world of Kingdom Hearts. I never thought it would kind of come to this, but it sort of has. Now, they're not too bad, but then they're not too good either. I feel like the microtransaction system for Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key is sort of in between. I'm very undecided about how I kind of feel about it. But anyway, I'm going to talk about it today, and I'm going to tell you guys exactly what the microtransactions are for this game. So, uh, the way microtransactions work in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key is through basically you spend your money to receive a premium currency. That's pretty much how microtransactions work in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key. And a lot of free to play games usually have this kind of premium currency, you know. Um, for instance, a game would have the normal currency that you earn by just simply playing the game, and in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, the normal sort of standard currency currency that you'll collect throughout the game will be the traditional money that we've become so used to in Kingdom Hearts, but the premium currency in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key is these little things called jewels. So yeah, this is the premium currency. Now you can buy these jewels with uh, your real life money. There's uh, quite a few different options. I'm going to bring that up right now. So as you guys can see on screen, uh, we got a few options here, got three options, and I believe there are more below, but we'll just go over the first three ones because the options get more expensive uh, kind of as you scroll up or down or whatever. So uh, we can see right here that we have um, jewel packs. Uh, essentially, that's what they are. So at the top, we've got for 12 US dollars, and um, also I just want to shout out uh, KHTTC on Twitter for giving me the screenshot. Basically, uh, my Kingdom Hearts Unchained key does not work anymore because I've disabled the Japanese app store because I've decided to kind of stop playing until the English version comes out. But anyway, top um, kind of option we have here, 12 US dollars and you'll receive 1,400 jewels um, right there. So that's that's kind of um, not, you know, it's, it's kind of... Eh. Once again, I'm kind of undecided about how I feel about this. The one below it is for two US dollars, you're gonna get 240 jewels, and for six dollars, you're gonna get uh, 720 jewels. Now, these prices are gonna be more expensive for somebody like me, um, mainly because of the fact that like 12 US dollars in my country is something like 14 to 15 dollars, I believe, so it's a little bit more expensive for me as well. Now let's kind of move over to what you can actually spend your jewels with and let's look at the main thing. So basically you spend your jewels on medals. Now first of all, 
Medals in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key is basically what you use to activate abilities, strong attacks, and stuff like that with. And medals come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Um, that's a metaphor, by the way. Uh, basically, you know, they come in all sort of different rarities, you know, bronze, silver, gold. Um, you've got like a high rank gold, you know, you've got a, like a two star bronze or like a four star silver, a three star silver, uh, a five star gold, six star, you know, like they come in all sorts of different sort of ranks and stuff like that. Now, this page right here, um, I want to quickly shout out uh, Nina Wayfinder on Twitter for giving me this screenshot. This is the screen for the metal page where you spend your jewels to purchase different metal packs and you will receive a metal at random. You're not guaranteed a metal. You, 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 you have a chance of pretty much receiving a medal through spending your jewels on the different the three different options we have here so it's kind of like a lucky dip now the top one do not be confused it's not 300 jewels it's actually 3000 jewels <laughs> yes 3000 jewels it's just that her drop down menu is actually covering that but through my own experience i do know that so at the top you are going to basically receive 10 random medals now, the thing about the top one is you can get up to a very high status um, gold medals and at least within there you are guaranteed two golds and then the rest I believe are silvers. I have actually purchased this option before because basically Square Enix were handing out uh, jewels uh, when Unchained Key first launched. But yes, pretty much with the first option, if you spend 3,000 jewels, which keep in mind, you know, if we go back to our options, we've got 1,400 for $12, so you're at least going to need to buy two of the top options, which turns out to be 20 freaking $4, and then you're probably going to need to buy an option down below, so it's all up, it's going to cost you like $26, it's pretty crazy, just to get 10 random medals with uh, kind of a chance to get a really good ones, you know, some really good ones. The one below is basically you've got a chance to get a gold, um, that's pretty much the best that you can get, and it will be ranked anywhere between 3 to 5 stars. Um, as you can see right there now most of the time you're gonna get a silver that only costs 300 medals and then the one below um, You know you can also spend a hundred jewels and you'll you know you'll get it like a silver or something So uh, how do I feel about this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna say You're probably stupid to go with the top option because that's about $26 just to get 10 random as fuck medals and Yeah, sure you're gonna get some golds and stuff in there, but is it really worth $26? Like, is it really worth that? Um, in terms of spending your jewels, you'd probably be best to go with the 300 jewel option because you still can get up to a five star gold right there, which is actually pretty decent. Of course, you're only gonna receive one medal, but still to the point, that's probably the best option to go with. So exactly what sort of system is this microtransaction system that Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key has? Is it a pay to win or what sort of is it? It's confusing as to what sort of system it is. I'm more so leaning towards pay to win just mainly because of the fact that kind of people who are going to sink in their money to buy jewels, to get metal packs, to get the really good freaking rare metals with high stats, those are the people who are going to have the upper hand, whereas the person who, you know, doesn't necessarily want to spend any money, um, they're going to have to find the medals through just playing the game, and you don't really come across them too often, through my own experience anyway. So if you want the rarest, strongest, best medals in the game, you're probably going to have to spend some money. Now, like I mentioned though, you can still get these medals from just playing the game, so don't freak out. And you can actually rank your medals up as well. Now there is another thing that you can spend your jewels on, basically you can spend 30 jewels to refill your AP. If you guys don't know, AP is returning in Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, and essentially what AP is, is pretty much, you guys should probably know that you do missions, and there's quite a lot of missions in the game. Each mission uh, pretty much requires you to have a certain amount of AP, so say uh, mission 1 is going to take away 2 AP off your 10 AP which after that mission you'll have 8. If you deplete to 0 AP, um, you're not going to be able to play any missions and you have to wait a certain amount of time for your AP to refill up. Essentially, if you guys have played like those Facebook games, um, it works similar to that, um, like how they implement energy. You can only do so much in one sitting until you kind of have to wait until your energy bar, or in this case for Kingdom Hearts, um, your AP bar to refill back up. However, if you have jewels, you can simply refill the whole AP gauge back up to your maximum that you currently have. 
um, for a small cost of 30 jewels. So it really seems like Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key's sort of microtransaction system is for people who want to continuously play the game, do it at a fast rate, get all the best shit as soon as possible. The good thing that I've kind of come to realize is that Square Enix usually hand out jewels kind of during events and stuff for free and I think that's really really cool. Now I don't actually know whether this was just to kind of celebrate um, you know the release of Kingdom Hearts Unchained's key for the Japanese version but I do know from my own experience that I was receiving a shitload of jewels randomly like there was a point where I had like 6,000 of them it was pretty damn crazy but um, once again I really don't know whether that was in celebration of the release and um, also they were handing out jewels to kind of uh, apologize for all the bad server maintenances that they kept having. But anyway, uh, yeah, the microtransaction system for Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key is very interesting. Like I mentioned, I don't really know how to feel about it. Should I feel angry at Square Enix? Although, should I feel good with Square Enix? Like, it's, it's a really, really confusing kind of subject and topic, but uh, I'll let you guys decide on it. If you play Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, what do you think about the microtransaction system that is currently in the game? Otherwise, guys, I've been cynical. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, and until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.